Okay, another kind of microbe that we're going to talk about, these are protists. And protists are oftentimes one-celled organisms, um, but they can be multicellular. So um, some algae are protists, and they, um, they are multicellular protists. So these are eukaryote cells. And mostly unicellular, but some are multicellular, not as many, but um, some of them are. They can be heterotrophic, which means they absorb other organisms, or they can be autotrophic, which means they use photosynthesis. They live in water, they live in moist soil, they can also live in humans. Um, protists is an overall category that we put all organisms that are not a plant, they're not an animal, and they're not a fungus. And sometimes this is kind of a catch-all category. And so we say, well, it might be a little plant-like, but it's not exactly a plant. Or it might be a little bit like an animal, but it's not exactly an animal. And so we'll put it in the protist category. And the way we classify these protists are by nutrition. So the animal-like um, protists consume organisms, they're heterotrophs, the plant-like protists, they use photosynthesis, so they're autotrophs, and the fungus-like protists, um, they're absorptive heterotrophs, which means they absorb nutrients from um, other organisms, but they don't actually consume the entire organism. And then we also classify them by movement. So some of them have cilia that help them move, and some of them have a flagellum. So let's look at the animal-like protists first. The zooflagellates, they have a flagella. So the zooflagellates would be like this little guy right here because he has a flagella. The sarcodines, they use their cytoplasm to move. So if you look at this little guy right here, he um, doesn't have um, cilia, he doesn't have a flagellum, but he projects his cytoplasm and moves that way. The ciliates have cilia, so you can see these little hair-like structures along this paramecium. And then there are, there are sporozoans, and sporozoans don't move. Um, they don't have a mechanism that helps them to move, but sporozoans often are carried in the bloodstream, and so they basically use other organisms to move them around. All right, so we're going to talk about some diseases because protists are... Um, a lot of our disease carriers and they um, have a pretty drastic effect on humans and so the first one we're going to talk about is malaria. Malaria is caused by a protist called plasmodium and it's in the phylum sporozoa so it doesn't have a mechanism to move by itself but what it does is it uses the Anopheles mosquito to move it from um, the mosquito to the host and then it makes that host sick and the symptoms of malaria are high fever, um, shaking chills, flu-like symptoms and anemia and um, can even cause death. Now malaria is very common in these uh, in the southern hemisphere so you'll see here there are quite a few cases of malaria found in South America Malaria is extremely common in Africa, but then also in these countries here near India. So, um, and there are thousands and thousands of malaria cases every year. Um, people who are going to visit these countries, they generally will t start taking a medicine about two or three weeks before they go, and that medicine builds up in their system and keeps them from getting malaria. So it's not exactly a vaccine, but it's very similar to a vaccine. All right, the next disease that I'm gonna talk about is cryptosporidosis. Um, and this is a disease, it causes um, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. And this is also from the phylum sporozoa. So this depends um, on water to move it around. So this one is not carried by an insect, but is carried rather by water. And so the water will get contaminated and will make people sick. 
Um, and this can be very common in third world countries that don't have clean water. But this is also found in the United States. And so whenever there's um, a protest found in water that is making people sick, this is the one that is found. So swimming pools can get infected by this. Um, there's sometimes contaminated water sources. And this is one of the reasons why um, public pools check their water so often and um, they make sure that their chlorine levels are high. Um, this particular protist is, uh, it's not killed readily by chlorine. So they have to check the pools often to make sure that this um, protist is not in the water. All right, the next disease is African sleeping sickness. And this is caused by a protist called trypanosoma and it's in the phylum Zuma stegophora. I'm gonna trip over that word a little bit. And the way that it's transported is through the tsetse fly. And so this fly will bite people and it will pass on this protist. And um, this builds up in the bloodstream and it actually causes uncontrolled sleepiness. So the person will really lay down and go to sleep and then they don't eat and they're not drinking fluids and so a lot of people die from this and this um, is very common in africa and you can see from the map here there are quite a few regions where it is um, that it is very common and causes a lot of deaths the next one is amoebic dysentery um, and Amoebic dysenteria, amoebic dysentery causes diarrhea. And here in America, that doesn't sound very critical to us. We don't really think of that as something that could kill. But when you, um, if you live in a third world country, then, and they don't have immediate access to clean water and they don't have immediate access to healthcare, diarrhea causes a lot of death in those countries. So amoebic dysentery is caused by um, um, Entamoeba histolytica, and it's from the phylum Rhizopoda, and it's carried by contaminated water. Um, and a lot of uh, a lot of people think contaminated water would be really easy to to look at and tell if it's contaminated or not, but this um, this protist can live in clear running streams. And so it's really important that, um, that you not drink a water source unless you know that it is a clear, like clean running water that's been filtered or processed. So like bottled water or tap water has been processed so that it doesn't have these protists in it. So sanitary conditions are extremely important to reduce the parasite infections. Um, clean water is one of the best ways to avoid these protists infections. Um, Giardia is called hiker's diarrhea. Um, amateur hikers, a lot of times they'll be hiking along and they'll see a clean stream and so they'll drink from it. So like if you look at this picture down here at the bottom, this stream right here, it's clear running. It doesn't look like it would be dirty. It looks like it would be clean, fresh water. Well you don't know what's in that water. And so a lot of times there will be these um, protests in there. And once they get inside of you, they'll make you very sick. <laughs>